welcome to our Friday Film Podcast with visuals, yay, and audio. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Today we have the brilliant Lindy Mugwara, who is trailblazing, knocking down doors for the young women in film. Thank you so much for joining us. This podcast is brought to you by Accountability Lab Zimbabwe and Magamba Network as an initiative to just provide opportunities and upscale new filmmaker skills and just really focus on accountability and integrity in our storytelling today. We have 10 film fellows and they will be embarking on this project. And at the end of it, we get 10 amazing short films that they're each going to produce by themselves and showcased across all 10 provinces. And that is something very similar to what Lindy is doing. Thank you so much for joining us here and welcome. Thank you so much, Monia, for having me. I'm so excited. I'm so glad. So, First of all, congratulations. Huge congratulations are in order for Highway Black. Thank you very much. Huge feat that you guys pulled off. You primarily were an editor, but you were also involved in the writing. And I know sometimes you were on the camera and you were co-producer. For Highway Black, I was primarily editor, but also co-producer. Writing and directing was all fungi. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's, That's amazing. You had a partnership between the three of you as friends to make this happen. Correct. Yeah, yeah, it was a leap of faith. I guess you could say, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, it yeah. worked. It, it, it was did. it was brilliant. Um, and it's been it. We had the idea since July. Uh huh. Nine months later, here we are. Oh, the, nine months later, yeah, it was just a, it was just talk. We were just talking about it. Yeah. Some guy was like, I got the short film that I yeah, just wrote. I was like, send it over to me. Give it, a, give it a read. And I was presently impressed. Like yeah, it was yeah. So then I said, you know what? Let's try and make it. And then uh, for some reason, Tavonga came to mind. Uh, I had worked with them previously uh, at Area Forty Six. Okay, we yeah, had, yeah. Short stint there together, and he also happened to be. He is also close by. He lives in my area. That's so nice. yeah. I don't know. He just he's this name that popped by, and then I I sent it over to him, and he was like, I'm game. What do we need to make this happen? Mm-hmm. And then it was mostly finances. Like he was more of the the money. And um, then, yeah, we doubled up positions. He did, um, D- he also DOP'd. Yeah. Fungai obviously right, the director. And um, also I took care of the costing as well. So I contacted all the actors and handpicked them each. Uh, yeah. You did a great job. And it's nice that the process came about organically to make this film between friends, but also you were very organized and had clear roles of who was doing what. And even though it was a small, short film, it had high production quality. Like it was just organized, professional throughout. And that's definitely something I know it's my daughter who was here before mentioned that, you know, a lot of making something is actually in the pre-production. It's like 80% pre-production before we get there. And I remember the experience like being on set, it was just super smooth for everybody. You had that all on lock and it's one of your first times producing, right? But you did it so um, well. This was the second one. I did a short, a uh, five minute short mm-hmm. uh, three years back. Yeah. yeah. That was like my own thing. I was the producer the director, writer, co-editor. The so everything. yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's you Zimbabwe. You were everything. Yeah, yeah. That the was everything. the first thing I ever did on my own, my uh-huh. own production. Yeah, and then this one was the second one, uh-huh. and much bigger scale, obviously. Yeah, and you know, appropriately with the bigger scale, you guys are gonna have a nice premiere event. Correct. Yes. Yes. yes that's the plan. That's that's the, the, that's the hope. Um. Yeah. 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 You yeah. got some star-studded names, yourself included, in the, in, in, in the film. Star-studded. So, I mean, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> but that's nice. I'm excited. It's obviously going to be COVID compliant, but we're trying to still bring the, you know, the glamour that it needs. And not just the glamour, but, you know, yeah. just honoring everybody who's who was involved, Correct. their roles. And also a big part of it, and I'm so grateful that you're having this premiere because a huge part of what we're trying to do with more accountability and stuff is just having it be accessible to the people because so many small projects get done on the scale and then you just don't have any access Mm. to it. And then finally you see someone on the big screen and you think, where do they pop out of? And they've been hustling Mm -hmm. this whole time. They've been hustling. We're just talking about this recently with like um, Bong Joon-ho and he's like Mans has been there and you see it a lot with like women or like with people of color and who are underrepresented you think that they haven't been working and it's nice to be able to highlight the work that they've been doing. 
And exactly. yes, I'm, yes, yes, I'm so excited yes. that you're here. So we get to highlight this, you know. Um, so you were with FC Stanley and then um, that's Fungai and then Tawanda, Tawonga Gozo, mm-hmm. right? Um, and the three of you made this together. And is there anything in the future works? Is this like a partnership? Is it going to go continue forward or like what's next? Well, uh, the jury's still out. Some well deserved sleep, yeah. first of all, because I know you were editing we'll for a see, long we'll time. See. But the, yeah, the plan is yeah, the plan is to make more productions together. Because yeah. this one was actually quite it was surprisingly seamless in the way in which we did mm-hmm. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Um across the board for everyone. Yeah. So yeah, I think we will. We will. Yeah. That's nice. So in the editing process, I know that's that's a lot and different people have different different uh, methods about how to go about it so what's your workflow what does that look uh, like i don't have a specific workflow i just yeah. uh well because every project differs mm-hmm. so i just i don't know i just edit i just there's no secret sauce man yeah i just edit <laughs> now but it's just yeah i just i just put everything together and just i just do the work just, just do the work That's because what I mean is. sometimes you have to be creative though when, when it comes to editing because there's continuity issues yes. and like you'd have a, an idea of how you want to cut it right but then you're like oh no like that's not gonna work like I mean there's some things you can get away with like maybe someone grabs the cup with his left instead of his right right mm. you can you can get away with those minor details but there's some that you just can't go go over so you just have to really be yeah, on your toes, you just, yeah, be creative and inventive in that way. Yeah, because I remember you were you were in the room when we'd be shooting, so you could see the different angles and everything you wanted, and it's also easier at that stage to to pick up these different things, like you mentioned, that you know yes. you're going to have to fix in post. Mm-hmm. But still, even in the once we watched it back, I was like, oh, how did we not see that? <laughs> but, yeah, it's like, yeah, that's why continuity is important, important. guys. Yeah. Ah. Uh, that's rough. Yeah. That's rough. And in in the process, so at least you're, you're on set, you're seeing these different things with the continuity and stuff. But when it comes to the final vision, because the editor has a huge responsibility because the writer's written this amazing story and the DOP has brought it out in the lens, but the editor's really the one who has the final sort of how the story's going to come across. True, true. Um, I actually just... Remember, there's a speech from Lupita Nyong'o mm-hmm. when she won the Academy Award for Charlie as a Say. She actually thanked the editor. <laughs> yeah, that's not like you don't hear that often. She was yeah. like, "Yeah, because it can be shambles mm-hmm. without you mm-hmm. guys. Mm-hmm. It can properly be shambles." Yeah, yeah, because it's it's just it's it's you don't notice it. What we do, we don't yeah. you don't notice it. So that's that's if if people are not noticing, then you're on that's the, right the point, part. right? Yeah, and, right and it's part. like you know, Lupita had to thank and it was nice that she did that because otherwise it's a thankless job like nobody Mm -hmm. it's one of those your absence the proof of your absence is really (laughs) the proof of your work because if you do your job well everybody's gonna be like like, what what have you done but if you don't it doesn't Mm -hmm. it doesn't quite translate it doesn't yeah and with you as you're you're cutting the clips together and you know last level things like the important things like the color grading and just setting the mood also with the cuts because that's a whole new that's a new language that you bring into it that the DOP can't bring into it when you're making those cuts and you know fixing up the lighting and stuff so what's your what's your process obviously you have to begin with a vision in mind but you have to be open to new things as a story unfolds itself to you Mm -hmm. But also in the some of the way we shot the film, we shot for edit. That's so that's we knew smart. that okay, we're just gonna do a pickup of the last part and then just edit on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that there was there was a lot of that actually. Yeah. There was a lot of like Ryan Gun type filmmaking because you know we did have a couple of technical issues when we were shooting, so we just had to like kia kia. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good. Like the three of you worked, you began with the end in mind of what you want this to look like, and you were there at every process because I know. Um, Fungai especially was with you sometimes in you know when you're edit while while you were editing in the mm-hmm. editing room so mm-hmm. to speak, mm-hmm. looking at the different cuts and making these choices, and and how is that when did you guys have exactly the same vision for what you wanted to see Actually, or you had to? Um, Fungai Ke, he only saw we only started doing sessions together after the first cut after I came up with the first cut I just mm-hmm. edited whatever yeah. there were no notes on how to cut it 
I just edited. And mm-hmm. then that's when the notes started coming in. That, okay, maybe add this and that. But uh, for the most part, it was pretty much uh, the same. Yeah. Yeah, a few tweaks here and there. But that's nice when you, you guys are all understanding each other. Mm-hmm. And I've heard that's a good process for some editors to, you know, the director, you do your job. The editor, you do your job. And then you come together after everybody's put in their pieces to now just nitpick and make it look yes, as yes, glorious as you yes, want it to yes, look, yeah? Yes, yes. So you just sort of, you work on a chip away, bijana, bijana kind of process. Yeah, I do, actually. I just throw everything in the timeline and then work it from there. Mm-hmm. What, yeah, just what best conveys the story. Uh, yeah. If we're talking about narrative, yeah. Because yeah. there's different processes for different mediums. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. when you're looking at which which frames, which shots and everything look best with the next thing. Mm-hmm. That can be a difficult thing. If you don't begin with your knowing exactly what you want, you can, you know, cut to, cutting too much. Now you have to go back. You have to exactly. bring the best out of everybody's work. Exactly. And that's rough because everybody has done their job well, but you are now left to refine the best of the best of mm-hmm. the best mm-hmm. into this amazing product. Very much so. Yeah, it's, and it's hard with, like, when you do, like, five or six takes and they're all good. And it's like, which one do I think, though? Like, how am I going to do? Yeah. I, I encountered that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember there was a few, a few brilliant takes and each one had something different that we definitely wanted to be in the yes. final product. But you can only pick one, right? You can only pick one. How do you make those decisions? Dude, uh, I go with instinct. Yeah. Yeah. I That's just, always good. Yeah, yeah, but I have to watch it several times and it's like, okay, you know what? This one, just, just because got, got maybe that. Be, yeah, just there will be something a little bit different mm-hmm. th- yeah, that you can pick up and then say, okay, you know what? I think this serves the story better yeah. than maybe the others. Mm-hmm. An instinct is what you go with because, you know, you like you said, you've watched it like six times, including <laughs> the six times we shot it including the multiple times you saw it in your head when you just saw the script Mm -hmm. so to give yourself that distance to be able to see it with the objective eye and go with your instinct even though you have all of this data in your head that's i think i think that's an uh, astounding ability that editors have yeah 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 Yeah. yes incredible i remember i think um it was harry potter or something like the order of the phoenix where I think they shot the scene 27 times. Yes, yes, yes. And then yes. the person who edited it watched it almost like, if not 27 times, like much, many, mm-hmm. many more times mm-hmm. than that. And I was oh, like, yeah. just <laughs> so how crazy, right? You're yeah. still mm-hmm. able to remove yeah. yourself mentally from it and see it objectively from an audience point of view, even though you are within it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy talent. You have that instinct. Just have to have well, it. Well, it's a love hate thing. I'm it's not a love hate. It is, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's tough. It is, it is. So, we're both reps, rep teens, alums, even though Correct. we missed each other, Correct. unfortunately. Correct. <laughs> Lovely days. Um, so, we have these backgrounds in theatre. So, what drew you to film and to editing this love hate relationship that you have? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it was always film. Really? That I was into. And then. But then the performing part of it, like the acting and stuff, mm. I, I, was, I was drawn to that when I was a bit younger. And then that's when I joined Drip Teens. I must have been about 15. Yeah. Form 3. Same. So a, short, a short stint. Oh, really? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. A short stint there, maybe. Because I joined in third term, I remember. And then I had to go to boarding school. So I couldn't continue. Mm. Yeah. So it was, it was a great, it was, it was as short, as fleeting as it was. It was very informative. Yeah, there was a lot of information. Because I was also quite the shy one. So, it, so when we performed, that all went away. Yeah. It's nice that, that liberation mm-hmm. that you have. And I guess you feel it now as well when you're behind, when exactly. you're behind the screen. Exactly. Because um, I know you operate camera as well sometimes I, when I you do. need to. I do. I do. Uh, skill set. <laughs> yeah, that's where it started, actually. Yeah. The camera thing. Yeah. Uh, because I had a short stint with C Media, mm-hmm. uh, the church. So, yeah, with C T. Aha. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, was, so, that must have been brilliant. Because this was sort of like before it became C Media, C Media as we know yes, today. Yes, it, it was but in still the early that stages. Like, uh, yeah. high pressure environment at celebration, pre- yes. like yes. proper full scale, high quality production on a schedule. Must have learned a lot. 
dude, I was, I was the jib, the jib camera. I was there. Yeah, that was the one, man. Yeah. I was so blown away by that. So, yeah. yeah. So that really elevated it, I think, more. So and then I thought, yeah, no, film is definitely what I wanted to do. It's definitely for you. That's why it was yeah. cemented for you. That this Just is, film in general. This is the thing, yeah. Not necessarily knowing exactly. I had aspirations of directing, actually. Uh-huh. But I didn't really know what that was, per se. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what it really entailed. Yeah. Because you know, the title, oh, directed by. You know? Right? Because yeah. like your name's up there. It's like executive producers. Yeah, okay. And then directed by. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah, but, and it's like actually the editor had the final say in <laughs> the story in the actual because we're seeing that right with like the Zack Schneider cut of um, Justice League and you know this is what happened but this is what yeah. I wanted to exactly. say and that just shows you how much power the editors have mm-hmm. and I mean sometimes you know it's the studios and the people above but yeah that's why there's a director's cut you know yeah yeah couldn't could all make it in the final cut so they had to make um, a director's cut yeah. <laughs> so. You you've started at uh, celebration, so you learn all these skills, skills and everything, and then you went and actually got formally trained. So not just you had the working experience, which is really lucky because that's not something that a lot of people get to have before they actually get to now learn the theory and be able to retroactively apply it to something that they already know and truly understand it. So you went to the US and got formally trained. I did. I went to film school. It was bachelor's degree, two year program, and it was intense. I can yeah, imagine. Uh, we learned everything in film from pre production right until post. We had three post classes. Oof. Yeah, we had to make three films. Yeah, we made three short films in mm. in the in the two years, and it was yeah, it was intense. But yeah. I we managed to keep it up because the school uh, the way in which they go about it um it's like an imitation of the real industry so we would actually mm-hmm. have classes like at 1 a.m. until like 5 you know just to simulate like oh this is being on set this is how it is this is how yeah. the industry is like so yeah that was a lot of late and early morning wow. say that that's true cuz you don't want to be hit by that suddenly you've done all this training and invested into it and then you realize well i'm not going to be able to wake up before him and it's like well that's just the job get used yeah, to it that's yeah, smart actually yeah yeah, yeah. and so, you're I mean, the first the first few months it was more theory and then we got into it after that it was like mm-hmm. practicals yeah oh that's great and you had a lot of amazing opportunities that came from that like people referring you for jobs i remember seeing great. you edited in the tri becca film festival ma'am yeah. Yes, wow. yes, 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 yes. Uh, so that gig came about through college, college friend. Because I, after uni, I moved to New York for work experience for a year, Lovely. and so he he had moved out there too. So I was like, you know, what, if you hear anything, let me know. I'm, you know, I'm waiting. You know, so I, you know, the first couple of months I wasn't doing much. Eh? I was mm. applying, 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 nothing, and then this comes along. And I didn't even apply for it. You know, I was it was a referral. Yeah. So I was a production assistant. It was a feature film called um, Hudson Tribes. Uh-huh. And that production company, they're the ones that referred me to Tribeca. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Because that's the industry, right? Like, you, you just sat there for a while. And then this huge thing just, it's, it's like blessings fall down you can apply you can apply you can apply but some of it is just yeah and i was on a student visa time was running out i need to get working <laughs> <in there. laughs> i feel like it's fresh because you know, they boot you out quick eh? Mm-hmm, they boot mm-hmm. you out quick a month is a long time for some of us we need to be you know so yeah, yeah. you know you got bills in new york right mm-hmm. yes, ooh, new york guys mm. all of that but yeah and you um Round that time as well, you got to go with a with like an NGO to shoot abroad as well. That was when I was in school, actually. In school, oh, like, that's brilliant. Yeah, so I took some time off school. It was just it was a month long program. Yeah, I went to Cambodia. It was a documentary outreach. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, yes. I I found out about it through the school. It was all it was all facilitated through. You. That's nice. It's kind of like a study abroad, yes, but within exactly. Uh-huh. So the people who were part of it were from all the world. Majority of them were from the US, from other colleges. Mm-hmm. And then we had a couple of people from Australia as well. Oh, that must have been nice. Oh. That was the only symbol, though. Oh, wow. <laughs> African. That's nice. Yeah. But you were, was, there were more women, at least, more they representative were, they than. Were, they were, yeah. There was also another woman of color. She's from Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Yeah. 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 And it must have been refreshing because I can imagine in, in film school, I mean, this 
it's more women than before, but you're still sort of, you know, a little island in a sea full of all Yeah, the rest. that's my experience. Yeah. It's yeah. Been my experience. <laughs> Definitely. In the minority, for uh-huh. sure. And for me, when I started, I just thought that was what it was. I mean, I just accepted it. Yeah. I didn't really pay attention. I just thought, okay, this is what it is. Mm-hmm. It just was just, I'm just always going to be the one, one girl or one of, yeah. Yeah. But it's nice that you at least are aiming to do more than just accept what the status quo. Like, thank you for coming onto this. Cause like, that's what we're trying to do, right? Like improve accountability in, um, in these spaces. And it's about equity. It's not just, you know, people just say, oh, these women are getting free jobs because they, all women it's like that's not true we haven't had the equal opportunity to have mm. these jobs you know somebody said to me the other day that oh women aren't in these positions because they're not confident I was like we don't we don't lack the confidence what we lack is the energy to constantly be battling somebody trying to take away your dignity mm-hmm. and what you know you've worked for for so many years versus doing the actual job and sometimes you just can't do both and a lot of people will make you know a lot of people like you know producing or networks or companies or whatever will force you to make that choice between staying Mm -hmm. and dealing with that and just leaving and having your peace so we just end up leaving and taking our peace and it's hard yeah and yeah was we cc mentioned this as well about just trying to pay it forward so she always tries to make sure that there's you know, we have, they, that they have interns that, you know, she coaches the women, she takes on an intern, she teaches them as much as you can. And I know you're trying to do that, something like that as well, just pay it forward and be responsible, be active in teaching yeah. the new generation. Yeah, correct. Uh, the production company I worked for, the first one, the LPZ, mm-hmm. I just mentioned them earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I, they also had a program there in the, in the States. They're very big on education. So they had after school program activities with underdeveloped, um, underrepresented mm-hmm. and minority communities. Yeah. So I did, I taught uh, two or three film classes. Yeah. Um, oh, to nice. seventh graders, grade sevens. Yeah. Catch me uh, up. <laughs> so that was quite interesting. And I just seeing how much he was invested in that and, you know, mm-hmm. trying to promote film at, you know, at the school. Yeah. And it being accessible and the kids really were into it. They really were into the whole film thing. Yeah. Uh I think maybe we can adopt something similar. Definitely. Um, yeah. Definitely. And even then I was still learning, but I, I still had knowledge that I could, you know, give the kids. Yeah. And you know, yeah. And it's nice that um because I know the the film fellows are getting like a sneak peek at uh Highway Black before the official premiere and you know, you're engaging in that make it accessible, give this information, pass on this information to people because, you know, here in Zoom, it's, it's a bit hard to get the, the full instructional package, like a two-year degree or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah collectives yeah. like this and m- more of similar types, yeah, we need more of that. And yeah. I think we just have to do it ourselves. For sure. So onus is on me and everyone who's, you know, in this kind of position to... Do it. Talk the talk. Yeah. Walk yeah. the talk. <laughs> True. It's like they just say lip service to yeah. actually yeah. be involved in doing it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you were exposed enough to join rep teams at 15 and, you know, know from there that you wanted to do film and all these things. But what do you feel could have been done better for you at that age to cement it? Because I know a lot of people in different forms of media, um, just coming from Zim, were just sort of does it just sort of hit like a wall because you know we were so focused on that like, I must get science, maths, I don't care, like my A level is And then they got there and like everybody has like a five year portfolio. And you want to go back to all like <laughs> and you just you took on Instagram and you just didn't know. <laughs> we yeah. just didn't know that you're supposed to have all of this as you're young, as you're going. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, follow your instinct and lean into the tal- your talents. Mm-hmm. And uh, develop them from there, and then you'll be able to carve a path for yourself and understand you know, the road you're supposed to go on. I think that that's the, yeah. that's how, yeah, that's what I would say. About and you've, that. Been, you've been quite proactive yourself into, like, proactive about showing up for yourself in your career and, like, making it go forward. 
because when you came back from the States, and even before you went, because you were um, at Celebration before you went, you just sort of hit the ground running. You make yourself known, hey, I'm here, I can do this, I have this skill set, let's work. And that's that's a that's a strategy that's worked for you, and it's something that we just don't see often, and I think it's also ingrained in us a lot, not just generally as a mother with children, but especially as a mother with daughters, like, don't mm-hmm. speak until mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. Also, warm in a mall when something somebody gives something to you. <laughs> it's it's yep. not how this works. You need to be out there, and especially like what you're saying, we have to create these things. We don't have the current institutions, especially helping women just go up there and do it. Be be the want to see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Start with the mm-hmm. man in the mirror, mm-hmm. like do it mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah, yeah. And how was that? Like, well, when I first came back, I didn't know anyone in the street. Yeah. Like uh, Joe and John, I didn't know who that was. I'm not gonna lie. Like, so I I was ch- straight up chilling. Eh, I was just testing the waters because the intention was to go straight back to the states. Yeah, that didn't work out. Um, but then uh, yeah, I, I did. Yeah, I started t- sort of just presenting myself to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I just got connections, and from then on in, Jeezy is one of the people. Mm-hmm. He was he was one of the first people I worked with. Gilbert, oh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and then it's from then it just started. Once it picks up, the ball sort of like keeps rolling, but getting it to that stage where you can start just pushing it over the hill for it to gain momentum is difficult. Was, so, but you want to stay at it. You, stay you at do. It. You have to stay at it. Um, like oh, by the way, I also do this and that. Oh, okay, you should come on board, and we're working on a, something. Yeah. So also just. Know that you have to volunteer a lot of, of your time, and it's not you're not always gonna get like mm-hmm. you the money you're not gonna get. Yeah, it's yeah. not always gonna be monetary. So there are a lot of things I just did for free. But you gain that experience because then that lets you do your own thing. Yeah, and it gets you um you know like with the your referral to the traffic at film festival, you you hone your skills so someone can confidently refer you. And I remember that's something Tizi mentioned as well that. Like, we need to develop expertise in an area so you can be a trusted, you know, member of the community. So when people know that they need something done, mm-hmm. as you presented yourself as, you, pres- you presented yourself as, I can do X, Y, Z, mm-hmm. and people took you on for X, Y, Z, and you did brilliantly with that, and it showed. And you're doing these small things that you know, might not get paid, and then that's when you end up at places like Area 46 or co-producing Highway Black. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I, I volunteered for Joe's feature, The Letter, uh-huh. actually, because I saw, my friend was the one who told me about it. He saw the prompt on Facebook. Yeah. He's like, why don't you volunteer? Because I wasn't doing anything at the time. And then I went on there. I was doing, I was continuity. And then Joe, I managed to get a moment with him. And then he asked me, oh, what do you do? And I told him, oh, I do film. And I'm into editing. Mm-hmm. And he's like, ah, oh, would you like to assist with the uh, cutting? And I, yeah, I ended up editing co-editing yeah. the letter with him. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, putting yourself out there. It's a, it's a huge leap, but once you get there, the, the good things happen. Love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hopefully. Good, good things happen. You. Yeah, it's like a ripple effect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, locally, uh, you've, you've worked with Joe and um, Joe Jungle and on the letter and who are the people so far that you know worked with or haven't worked with um, who you think are doing great things like amazing things um, there's this up and coming filmmaker called Daniel Lasker mm-hmm. he's uh, based currently based in Cape Town he's actually an actor but he also directs a lot of short films and stuff I think he's doing I think there's a feature coming up soon as well uh, he's from Bulawayo mm-hmm. Yeah, very talented young man. I, I like his work. Um, so you can look up his work on YouTube. Daniel Asker, you'll see all the short films on there. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's raising the flag high because he's doing some sure. really big things actually in Cape Town. Uh, I know he was in a series, Raised by Wolves, produced yes. by Ridley Scott. Yeah. So. And that's, that's a good model for, I know a lot of people will go through that model, like pass through South Africa first on your way to Yes, if you, you want to take that part, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a smart choice, yeah. 
Yeah, but what um do you have local productions? I mean, yeah, we're trying. But do you have any like local productions or other people who you want to collaborate with or local productions you just honestly just enjoy sitting like just enjoy binging <laughs> sitting and watching? Local production. Um well obviously the cook off, I mean that's yeah that is a breakthrough. I actually saw it before it came out on Netflix. I saw it as if when it premiered in uh-huh. it one, yeah. That was so to see I actually see the whole journey to where it is now. It's True. crazy, yeah. Because we saw the premiere and it was like it was such a great experience being a part yeah. of that. And yeah. Okay. Hi guys, my name is Salima Tinoim Banashamangani and I'm from Tara, Zimbabwe. Um, I'm part of the ALZ Film Fellowship Foundation 2020 to 2021. And my question is directed to Lindy. And it reads, this year's International Women's Month comes at a time where women's issues, gender equality and women's rights are very topical. What are the challenges that she is facing as a female director and what can be done to improve women's issues in the film production and making industry? Hi, Salima. Thank you for your question. Uh, So the challenges I faced as a female director has been the lack of opportunities compared to our male counterparts. Uh, So you come to find that when we try to source funds for our projects through initiatives and residencies, um, because there are not that many going around, it's like this competitive nature, competition between us women, and it's like only a select few of us can can actually get our our projects made. Um, And that shouldn't be the case. I mean, I, I feel there's enough room on the table for us to be able to tell our stories and and make the projects we want to make so in terms of what needs to be done uh gender equity we need to balance the scales and uh you know as far as i'm concerned we're not uh on the level of playing field as our as our males as our male counterparts and in order for us to do that uh just have to do more of these initiatives they just until until the day we are on par um, that's the reason they exist in the first place because there's a deficit. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like that's the way forward. You're doing this important work, and it's interesting seeing like transmuting one form of our storytelling from like oral history, and they they get to verbally tell this to you. You have to go there and sit down and listen for it, you know, and putting it into another media that's modern and like, but making it our own, like our new Zimbabwean film identity. Correct, yes. Uh, yes. It's a groundbreaking work because you're at like the beginning of the process. It's not really something, I mean, a lot of people are doing it, but it's still, we're in the beginning stages of it and mm-hmm. navigating how to tell our stories yes. in this um, in this medium. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So now, so you're on hold because of, um, you know, covered and everything, but you've got a lot of work, I understand. There's a lot of, yes, there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of editing, a lot of footage to, to sort through and also just to see what we've, we've managed to cover and what, what we need so far, yeah. going forward. Yeah. Yeah. And seeing also, I guess, like the different, because with, with uh, our old histories, right, you know, every puzzle or spice to it, each time you're seeing, trying to bring out those the little personal touches some people have and like comparing the different stories and seeing what was the reality, what is also how we make something like a legend mm-hmm. or a myth, how mm-hmm. we bring that story out of just a history exactly. and how it's going to translate into. Because um, I know Matt's story also does a lot of work with the archiving things um, and the sort of storytelling and transmuting it into on film and just like you mentioned with the initiative, just basic things like you know, sometimes it can be done on a phone. Sometimes it can be done, you know, letting people operate all this machinery and everything, but just getting the raw, true stories from people. Mm-hmm. And that's really important because we're, we're at a cusp, right? Like we're still a pretty young nation. Yes. And we have this, we still have a big rural urban divide. Very much so, and yes. Bridging that, bridging that, bringing it into our new identity, our, as they say, born. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. 
well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this talk with you. Um, you I'm too. super excited. We've got the premiere, and that's later for end of month, end of next month. End of this month, beginning of uh, April, yeah. tentatively. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, before I forget, I forgot we have another pro uh, production going on actually Ooh. with Fungai, it's me and Fungai. Uh, it's a series, a uh, lifestyle series. I can't say too much, I can't yeah. give away the plot, but it's a lifestyle series which will be coming out on YouTube soon. Yeah, oh, six part awesome. episodic. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's a good structure to have as well, like starting with short films and like limited series and yeah. as, you, as you're getting the momentum to get more resources and everything, but you have a professional workflow on a scale small enough for you to handle with the resources that you have. So mm -hmm. that by the time you, you know, start doing bigger things, you you know what you're doing. Exactly. Basically. Yes. And that's the important thing. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. that's great. Like you guys have that good solid partnership with work, and that's you see a lot of like amazing projects are. You know when you see me, you know, yeah, yeah, this is gonna be mm -hmm. good. Quality. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so excited for it. Thank you oh, so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, is there anywhere where so far where you just sort of post updates on your work, people can sort of get in touch or just see things apart from the premiere? Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry. Just repeat the question. Uh, is there anywhere where people can see your work apart from the premiere or like get in touch oh. with you yeah. or? Uh, socials, social media, the gram, yeah. Instagram. <laughs> yeah, 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 the gram. Yeah, great. post all the stuff on there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all these projects cool. will, will be on on there. Links to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, that's great. All right. Thank you so much, Ray. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us for our Friday at Home podcast. A huge thank you to our guest, Lindsay Mugwana. Please uh, like us on Facebook and Instagram. Drop us a comment below for any discussions you'd like to further have about this. It's lovely seeing new faces, old faces, everything just mixing together to grow our Zimbabwe in the film industry and just seeing these different kinds of storytelling that we're mixing and matching all in there. So please join us next Friday. Drop us a comment, drop us a like, anything, get in touch and look out for the premiere. Coming soon of Highway Black, co-produced by Lindy Mugwana, written by FC Stanley and directed. And also look out for our film fellows and what they'll be doing on our future quotes. Thanks so much. Bye.